This is a new DJI 03 compatible frame from Speedy B. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of what it is. We're going to put it together and then at the end, share with you my thoughts on it. Now, just to be clear, Speedy B have sent me this frame for free. However, they have not seen this video before it's been published. And as always, my thoughts are entirely my own. Anyway, let's get on with it because I haven't actually seen this myself yet and take a look at what's actually inside. Okay, so as I've said, we have a new frame from Speedy B called the Master. I've not actually seen this yet, so this is going to be a voyage of discovery for all of us. This is specifically designed to be used with the new DJI O3E unit. We're seeing a whole slew of frames from various manufacturers, and this is Speedy B now delivering one themselves. Now, I have to say, Speedy B's last frame was one of my favorite frames I have. It's a DJI frame that I've got here in the back, and it's been one of my favorite frames for builds in the last few years. It was a nice compact size, it wasn't too long, it had a good height between the plates, nice solid front end, and overall it made a really nice DJI build. In this one I actually had a full size air unit, but you could put a Cadex Vista in the back if you wanted to as well, and then I've got this extended TPU printed bit on the back. So it's going to be interesting to see what they've actually done here. Lifting the lid, we'll find inside all of the parts I assume, as I've said, I've not actually done this myself oh there we go on the top we have a set of instructions the master master 5 hd this gives us a bit of an overview of the frame itself looking at it let's let's get that open there it is we can see it from the bottom let's find a top side view oh there we go that gives us a good look at the frame there below that we've got a little card which tells us about the manual and then it looks like we've got all of the frame parts laid out in this box we've got a top plate with another plate there, lift that, we've then got a mid plate, Ooh, another mid plate with a rubber isolator is that or is that a rubber holder to go between the components, interesting. Just having looked at the instructions on this actually, there were some interesting bits that I spotted which is these you can see here which are vibration isolation modules for the center of the frame where your flight stack goes. I was just looking here and you can see that they're showing it here in the center. And you can see there that they're showing the Speedy B stack mounted to it. And again, if I look at that side of the instructions there, you can see that. And there seems to be this bottom protective pad. Oh, that's what that piece is that I just seen. That's a bottom protective pad for the frame just offering a bit of additional protection. And then in the rest of this box, we've got everything else included. We've got a wiring harness, interesting. We've got all of our screws, put the frame together, more screws. XT60, nice to see. A bunch of 3D printed parts for the frame from TPU, yep, in gray. And Speedy B have sent me some additional parts in yellow as well. So I'm guessing that's the yellow version of the parts. We've then got these rubber center pieces, silicon rubber. There's two, one yellow, one clear. That's going to offer some additional vibration isolation on the flight stack. Interesting to see that. I've not seen that from any other manufacturer. We've then got the front plates. These are CNC front plates, so they're going to offer a nice amount of additional protection on the front end for our camera. Looking in here, there's the arms. We'll get these out and check the uh, the width or the depth, I should say, of these in a moment. And then in here, in the rest of it, we've got some straps, some rubber grips or plastic grips, and then we've got antenna mounts there at the back too. So, what I'm going to do next is have a quick look at some of the parts before we put the frame together. I'm not going to do a build overview in this video, but I will just check a couple of things first. So if we just look at the arms, 4.86 mil thickness or depth on the arms. So they're going to offer a nice amount of strength. If we take a look at the top plate and the bottom plate. So we've got these two bottom plates. These are 2 mil. One of them is 2.4, is that one? That one is 2.41. Yeah, that one's 2.41. That one's 2 mil or 1.9. And then the top plate, 
2.6 on that. Yeah, 2.6 on that. So we're getting a bit more depth on that one. Right. The next thing I'm going to do is follow these instructions that they've included. Now, SpeedyB are really good with the instructions that they include with the kit. They're showing us the assembly guide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop it together and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like when it's done and then we'll have a look at its features. Just something I wanted to show you here on the front CNC area. You've got these little camera plates that are mounted on either side. I think they're made of plastic, might be something else, but they feel like plastic to me. Now, when you install them, they also include these little rubber pieces that go behind them. They are basically 0.5 mil tall, and what they do is set the width of the camera area. So whether it be 19 mil or 20 mil for the DJI camera. The interesting thing as well is they're going to offer a little bit of vibration isolation, which may help with the O3 camera. I've actually tested, you can put the O3 camera in with it there as well, but they're specifically designed to set the width, but they may offer a little bit of isolation against vibration too. Okay, now just to show you this bit, now it's together because there was a bit of confusion on the assembly. What we have is our bottom plate, which is the one without any pressed inserts at all. You then have Four screws that go through there and two slightly shorter ones, 12 mils, I think it's 12s and 11s or something like that. It says in the instructions. And then you have this silicon isolator in the middle. You have your arms into there and then the next plate up goes through that. The screws go into there with the four posts that hold it all in place. So what you've then got is the arms that interlock in around this silicon rubber piece in the middle. I decided to use the grey one instead of the yellow. Just suits me a little bit better. And then we have the plate on top and then we go forward then for the front of the quad. So the next thing is to mount the rest of the parts. Okay, so I'm at the stage where it would be time to put the top of the frame on. To do that, you would simply place it there, put all of the screws in, and basically then it's ready to go. You can see that I fitted the included XT60, which is nicely placed here at the front. Your battery's going to go here, which makes a nice, easy fitment there. And that bolts in place, and you just have your two solder points underneath. Now, there are some really nice, interesting features about this frame. We have our full CNC front end. We have the additional included 3D printed parts at the back. You'll see there's a hole here. This is actually for a heatsink, which is included with the HD vision, which is this little thing here. And that actually plugs into the base and that then helps cool the O3 ear unit. We'll take a look at that a little bit more specifically in a minute. Then in the middle, we have that silicon rubber area here, which is where our mounting pattern is for our stack. So we have a 30 by 30 or a 20 by 20, depending on which one you want to use. And the really interesting thing is that it is on this soft isolated area, which is going to isolate your stack from the main vibrations on the frame and should just help overall performance. Now, this, as I've said, is the HD version, which is designed to be used with the O3 ear unit. If I actually take the O3 ear unit here, that would actually be located roughly there. And you can see if I stretch the camera out that the cable isn't quite long enough. The standard cable supplied with O3 is not going to be long enough for this frame. You are going to need the extended cable, which is available up to 200 mils. Speedyb have actually sent me a 200 mil one with this build, and you would use that to actually stretch that out to allow it to fit. Obviously, if you put the O3 ear unit right up against the plate, it's closer, but it's going to be too tight. So you are going to want that extended cable to be able to use this with the O3 system. Just to show you what that extended cable looks like, you can see it would allow plenty of additional length on the camera cable. So you're going to need to get one. I don't believe this is included with the kit. So do make sure you pick one of these up before you start your build. Otherwise, you're going to come up against that issue. Now, just something to mention on these rubber isolators that they include. You have two, you have the yellow one 
and the clear one. Now there is actually a difference between them and that is the stiffness or the hardness of the silicon. They rate this one at 50 degrees and this one at 30 degrees. What that means is the clear one is going to be a softer silicon compared to the yellow one. As for which one is going to be the best one to use, it's hard to say at this point. I've gone with the grey one but it was just worth noting that there is a slight difference between them. One is going to offer a bit more vibration isolation compared to the other. So depending on what your setup is depends on which one you want to choose. I'm going to go with the grey one though. Now space wise there is plenty of room in this frame. We've obviously got the O3 air unit at back. We've got this space here between the front camera pod and where the flight stack's going to be. The air unit is placed sort of centered there which is going to give a bit of space either side as well. Width wise there is plenty overhanging at the top although it isn't overhanging the main stack area too much. You can just see the bolts go to there on there on a 30 mil stack whereas on a 20 mil stack it would be much tighter. At the back you can see where the air unit is the frame does cover that and it isn't overhanging at all. Now height wise there is 22 mil on the standoffs here so if I just double check that it does give plenty of space inside for quite high stacks. In fact it's 22.9 it's closer to 23 mil but if you base it on 22 so there's plenty of height here to get a good stack in there and you're not going to be struggling height wise too much. Now there are two versions of this frame from SpeedyB going to be available, the standard version and the HD version that I'm showing you here. The HD one comes with some extra accessories for the O3 ear unit. It has this little heatsink that fits into the bottom of the frame and it also has this little bottom plate which is designed to meet to that heatsink but also has a cutout underneath to allow your cable to go through. Now this doesn't replace the bottom plate on the O3 ear unit, this actually goes on there, bolts on. You you can see there like that and they actually include some replacement screws in the pack as well to take out the original screws that are on the O3 ear unit, screw that to it and then that then mounts to the frame. Now it's got a cutout in there to allow your cable to go through which is a nice little touch so for instance if we plug the O3 cable into the ear unit you'll then see that this allows you to actually fold that over underneath out the way to make a nice tidy setup and then when this mounts in the frame the heatsink would go on top like that there. Now something that would be worth doing with this is just putting a bit of thermal compound on to help with the heat transfer. So for me I would just put some thermal compound around this area here so when we mount this onto the bottom it's going to make sure it's got the best possible heat transfer and then I'd put a small amount of thermal compound on each ridge there so when the heatsink goes on it's going to give the best possible thermal transfer for the O3 ear unit and just help with the overall cooling. Just to show this in the back of the frame section we take the heatsink module and this just drops into the back of the frame. You might need to give it a bit of a push to get it in. It is a very tight snug fit. Once that's in you can then see that sticks through the bottom of the frame there so that's going to offer some additional cooling. That then leaves the four outer mounting posts so what you would then do is have your O3 ear unit with our cable underneath like that mount that there like that and then put the included screws into the bottom and that would then mount it all in place. Next I'm just going to finish putting the frame together and then we'll take a bit of a better look at how it is once it's finished. So here it is all finished. Now this is a very nice frame. We have plenty of space on board for getting all the equipment on board we need such as our flight stack in the middle as well as our O3 ear unit at the back. There are some really nice touches with this frame including the built-in XT60 and the included 3D printed parts at the back. We have our camera plates up front in this CNC housing which has plenty of room and as I showed earlier you do have little rubber isolators that allow for either 19mm or 20mm cameras. As you can see the O3 camera does fit in in the front and the frame does offer a nice level of protection for that lens. Moving to the middle you can see we have that large silicon isolator which is offering a 20 by 20 or 30 by 30 mounting pattern. This is going to help isolate your flight stack from the mainframe ensuring that you get the best possible performance from your flight controller. 
At the back, we then have our space for the ear units. Now, this frame has been specifically designed for O3, and it does have an O3 specific mounting pattern as well as a larger mounting pattern below for ear units such as the Vista. They do also include screws with the kit, allowing you to directly screw the O3 ear unit to the frame, and it's nice to see that included in the package. Overall, up the back, there's plenty of room, but as I mentioned earlier, you are going to need to make sure you do have a long enough cable to be able to get that ear unit in the back with the camera up front. What's also nice with the frame is that you do get these extra little accessories. We have this like soft protector that goes on the bottom, as well as the TPU mounts that go on the ends of the arms, just to offer a little additional protection and also keep the frame up off the deck. Overall, I think the new Master from SpeedyBee is a very nice looking frame. It has everything you need to get yourself up and running with O3, and I can see this being a popular choice with many people. Now, weight-wise, the frame is coming in at about 163 grams, depending on what accessories you have fitted. I think this is a nice looking frame from Speedy B that's been specifically designed to use with O3. There are some really nice little features on this. We have that integrated XT60, that full CNC front end, which takes a 19 or 20 mil camera. It is designed in such a way that it will keep the props out of view as well, according to the Speedy B paperwork. And you have that integrated heat sink up back, which should help with the cooling of the O3 three ear unit and then you've got the little additional 3d printed accessories as well there is plenty of space in this frame whether it be out back or up front there's a nice extra length here too and there's plenty of height in there as well and you shouldn't have any problems no matter what stack you're going to choose now, SpeedyBee are going to sell this frame in a few different options. There's a standard version, which doesn't include the heatsink and the O3 specific accessories, which is going to be $62.99. And the O3 version is going to be coming in at $67.99. There's also going to be versions of this frame available with the SpeedyBee flight stacks as well. You'll be able to get it with their F4 version 3 or their F7 version 3 as well. And it's nice that you're going to be able to buy this in almost a complete all-in-one package. I did do a review view of that F7 version 3 stack on the channel a few months ago. I'll put a link to that in the description. It's been absolutely perfect for me. It's a very good flight stack and it's going to be a really good option for a quad of this type. Now, if you're interested in getting one of these, there will be a link to it in the description. Again, I just want to say up front, SpeedyB did send me this frame for free. However, they have not seen this video before it's been published. And as always, my thoughts are entirely my own. Overall, I think if you're looking to get yourself an O3 frame, this is going to be well worth a look. The only thing you do need to take into account is that you are going to need that extra length cable for the O3 camera if you're going to use it in this one. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck in the build. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. If you have found this video useful, please do let me know in the comment section. If you have any questions, please do put them in there as well. If you'd like to support the channel, please do check out the links to Patreon in the description. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my patrons for all of the support they've given. I would not have been able to keep making content on this channel without their support. I also want to say a massive thank you to everyone who has donated through Buy Me A Coffee as well. Those donations do not go unnoticed. And again, a big thank you from me. Anyway, that's it from me in this one. Stay safe. I'll speak to you soon.